Testing, are we live? Is yes. this uh, the thing on? Oh, I didn't mean to play that. Anyways, welcome to another live stream episode of Geek Bros Outdoor. I'm your host, Possibilities. This is my co host with the, with the glasces. Oh, yeah, uh, C64. <laughs> of course, C64. old man, C64. Yeah, and then we have a special guest, uh, my former roommate, uh, former friend, non acquaintance. What, what is your handle? Uh, my handle's um, XX Barriers, XXX, and more X's. I mean, you only have two X's at the beginning, but you have like five X's afterwards. Don't look at me, I just use a username generator. All right, we're gonna call you Barriers. What is he? Anyways, for today's episode, we're gonna be talking about. Uh, E3, specifically the new Xbox One X specs with that, uh, what we think about it versus PC gaming, other console gaming. We'll talk about some uh, other game chillers that look pretty good to us. And I think we're just going to go dive a little bit into esports since Barriers over here kind of has a, a thing for esports right now. <laughs> and we'll go through his life story, how he came here, how he got to be here. And um, basically, it's just his, his autobiography. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Anyway, so again, I'm Possibilities. This is my co-host. You should know him by now, Commodore 64, C64, and special guest, Barriers. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump into E3 then. So Commodore, I know you wanted to talk a lot about uh, Commodore 64, C64. So when is it? Uh, I really wanted to talk about the Xbox One X um, still. Okay. I mean, I did do an episode on uh, E3 a little bit earlier. Um, can you hear me also on the live stream? I just want to make sure that last live stream, would, nobody can hear uh, me. Yeah, it just came up. Let me mute that. Okay. Yeah, so for, Anyways. Yeah, so for the audience here, uh, this is our second time live streaming on this Geek Bros Talk episode. So that first time had a few technical difficulties, mainly with my microphone. So if you can't hear, if you're on here, let us know. We're still figuring it out, but I think it should be working okay now. <clears throat> Anyways, so back to uh, E3. You want to talk a lot about Xbox One X. Um, yeah, so I mean, I didn't really see the specs on it. All I saw was like, oh, it's running 4K. It's uh, pretty equivalent to probably like a medium range PC. And again, like with the PS4 Pro, even though it renders at 4K, it's the checkerbox method, right? Yeah. So it's not really native 4K per se. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, mainly the reason I wanted to talk about this is for the simple fact that the hardware it's actually good enough where you can do 4K. <laughs> now, um, the GPU, the CPU, GPU, it is a own custom design version, so it's not the same Jaguar and so, version so AMG, that you have. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so it's a specially modified. It's got its own water cooling. I think it has eight gigs of DDR5 memory, and it can produce actual 4K, and it still comes with a UHD drive and everything. And so. It's, I looked at the, some of the specs and also some people, you know, like whenever you're talking about true gamers, right? Serious gamers, I think everybody can agree if you want the best experience, it's going to be in a PC, right? But with the Sony PS4 Pro um, and the Xbox One X, a lot of PC builders could build an equivalent system for about the same or less, right? But now, with this Xbox One X, at least right now, from what I saw, the parts and PC part builders, you have to spend around seven to eight hundred dollars to get the same performance. And so, right. I'm just wondering if it won't be out till November, so <laughs> prices should be lower then. I'm just wondering if this is gonna sway people who are actual hardcore PC gamers to actually, you know, go over to Xbox One X. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Since you are PC gamers. Um, in my opinion, probably not. Uh, it's not really like the hardware to specs that I do. I mean, obviously that's one big part of PC gaming, but I think it's kind of just the feel and atmosphere of PC gaming that's different from console gaming. Um, you know, to me, like what console gaming represents now is, I think just exclusives really. And uh, like titles specifically for that platform. That's like, that would be the only reason I would want to get one. Um, you know, at, at this point before the whole point of consoles were to kind of unify the experience, right? It's easy to just mm -hmm. buy a console and start playing games. Um, for me, I don't really need that anymore. And I think a lot of reasons why people went to PC gaming was so they could have more flexibility, more customizability. And so I don't think it's going to sway them back. It's kind of like when you start PC gaming, it's kind of hard to go exclusively back to console. You know, to me, it's like you have a console as like a companion 
for your gaming, not not your your main gaming station. Unless it just comes out with so many good games that like the PC doesn't have any good games to play, but that's kind of not really the case. <laughs> there's always there's so many games for PC. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah, and so like you know, the last console that I actually owned that I can remember buying with my own money was probably a PS2. PS2, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was like the the last console that I really wanted. I mean, other than that, it's kind of just bumming off other people, you know, like oh, he has PS3. Um, but even then, like, kind of stopped playing console games, PS3, Xbox 360 era. Uh, never really got into the last one. And to me, this is pretty interesting because we're seeing this extension of the <laughs> PS4, Xbox One life cycle, right? Um, and to me, like, Xbox One X releasing so late. I mean, before, when consoles used to release, they needs to release at the same time, right? Like, PS3 yeah. came out, Xbox 360 came out, and Wii came out all around the same time frame. And now it's all staggered, and it's different now. And you kind of lose this, this sense of a console generation or like a, a the next generation, right? It's kind of gray now to me, at least. And, um, you know, like, you know, my brother knows um, I'm really pretty much new to PC gaming. I mean, the last time I really PC game was, and I've mentioned this many times, was the very first Unreal, you know? So that was like a long time ago. And so, like yeah, like in the 90s, like, so like when i seven or something like that something like that you know way before most people were born and so uh whenever i got into pc gaming just recently because of my brother uh, as anybody who's seen my uh, linux pc build i could actually play modern games now on steam and the one the one thing that surprised me was like back then pc gaming was hard i mean sometimes it wouldn't work your drivers wouldn't work uh it was complex you know even though you still use the keyboard and mouse but nowadays like I just stick my controller in, start up Steam, and it's like a console to me, just with way better graphics. Right. And so it's not not more friendly and modern, <laughs> modernized to say the least. Yeah, so it's so much more accessible, <laughs> and there's just a lot of really great games. I'm like, I'm really surprised actually. So I could easily see why PC gamers they don't even look at the consoles really. I mean, it's a companion, but if you want the best <laughs> gaming experience, I could see why people stick to the PC games now. It's so easy. Yeah. Of course, of course. You know. And um, I don't know if for to you guys, but for me, like this console generation, I don't think Xbox has really had a ton of really, really killer exclusive titles. You look at the PS4, there's tons of good PS4 exclusive titles for that. Um, and even more so now, Switch after this E3, where all the games come out for Switch, it, it really makes me want one again, just because like seeing that library looks really good. Like yeah. New Metroid, Zoom Mario, uh, Yoshi, Kirby, it, it just, it's insane how much like Nintendo came out with at E3 this year, but anyway, going back to the whole um, getting a console, yeah, it's like the the experience that I would want to get on PS4 and Xbox One X, I can get on PC. So if, to me, it's like why buy another console? Uh, the only experiences I could think of that you can't get are exclusives, right? And mm-hmm. looking at PS4, there's a few exclusives I want, but not enough to make me go out and just buy a system, right? Yeah, I, mean, like, what... I have a PlayStation Four. And I'm mainly a PC gamer, but um, I have a PS4 just so I can play the Yakuza games, and <laughs> exactly. uh, that's all yeah. I use it for. And maybe it's Netflix, your, your Yakuza yeah. machine, basically. Yeah, so, pretty much, because they're remaking one for it, and six is about to come out. So, yeah. like, all right, that's cool. And so, I mean, I'm yeah. curious about the um, because I don't have a console, and so when people talk about the whole online experience, a lot of people say the best experience is on the Sony PS4 and not on mm-hmm. Xbox. <laughs> I mean, is that true? or what, like just online gaming or yeah. just in general, like navigating well, I mean, like, stuff? Or... Well, I've noticed that like a lot of people have problems with the UI on the Xbox One, even after a lot mm-hmm. of updates, like your messages would just stop your game, you know, mm-hmm. or um, sometimes it would have a hard time like matching up players. It's just <laughs> it's just a, a not a great experience. And Nintendo Switch, they're just barely getting into uh, the online space, maybe later this year right well, with their i mean this service. this nintendo in general nintendo's online has always been Crap. pretty lackluster to say <laughs> the least wonky, yeah like, super wonky like, uh, the original wii and like the ds nintendo Switch. yeah yeah exactly pretty goofy. but i heard they're um, trying to fix it with the switch yeah i mean i i don't have enough uh experience with you know ps4 online or xbox one online to comment and saying like whether or not the the user experience is seamless um but you know last gen it was kind of reverse to that right so it's kind of weird to see this ebb and flow because Last year, or last console generation, Xbox 360 was the one doing everything right. It did online right. Mm-hmm. It had a bunch of good games, a bunch of exclusives on it. 
Um, and now to see it shift towards PS4, I mean, you can even see in sales numbers too, right? Like PS4 has been outstanding Xbox One uh, by a pretty good margin, you know, for the, for the whole release cycle. So it is interesting to see how they kind of like switch positions, at least in, in, that's how I see it. Yeah, it's just kind of, you know, I back then, you know, everybody was really all about the hardware. You know, when mm-hmm. the new console came out, you actually saw a leap in performance. And I kind of think where everything's going with consoles, I think Steam, the Steam box, if you remember that one, that was just a few years ago. That's what they were trying to do. They were trying to make it modular, a console with PC expandability. You know, mm-hmm. I think that's where consoles are going to be heading because they don't have a choice. You know, right. um, by the time the Xbox One X comes out in November, I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to make a much more powerful machine for five hundred dollars. By that point, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and it's interesting to see how each platform has kind of started to differentiate itself much, much more than it did last console generation and console generation for that. If you remember when GameCube, PS2, Xbox came out, they all did the same thing, right? There was very little difference between them, except like you mentioned, the hardware, right? Hardware and then uh, choice of games. And then you saw Nintendo start to branch out and do the Wii, right? It's like a totally different console experience versus, you know, the PS3 and the Xbox 360. And now even more so now you see like the PS4 and Xbox One each still trying to do their own things. They're coming out at a different time. So it's really interesting to see how each of them have kind of just changed and kind of like found their own groove. But I guess it can still coexist because like when you think about console wars before, it was always like just about specs. Yeah. What is that? Uh, what did you say? I can't hear specs you. Specs and uh, specs and exclusives. Yeah. yeah. The Xbox yeah. had the Halo series. What did the PS2 have? You know. I know. I think. I don't know if it's still the same for this generation, but I feel like specs don't matter as much. Um, I think more people are just. It's all about the exclusives or the titles, right? And so that's why you see PS4 coming out with so many good ones. And even like from a business perspective, right? They're investing a lot of. Um, effort into original IP, right? Or, you know, Sony backed projects. I mean, you take a look at like Death Stranding with, with Kojima yeah. went to, um, yeah. Horizon Z- or Dawn Zero, um, Bloodborne. I don't know, I mean, this is like a slew of exclusive PS4 games and it seems Sony is just like, you know, here's a blank check. I'm well, not necessarily yeah. a blank check, but you know, here's some money, go, like, go make it happen, right? I think they did a great job though. I mean. Like, you know, it's funny because, Barry, you mentioned, um, you mentioned Yakuza, right? I mean, yeah, uh, uh, Yaku- yeah that, that game is such an awesome game. And honestly, I can't think of anything like that on the Xbox out of the whole library. You know, I mean, you I could know- argue Shenmue 2 when it came back on original Xbox way back in the day. That's like oh, the well, closest uh, thing they had. Yeah, you're right. I'm talking about yeah. the uh, Xbox One X, you know? Oh, yeah, I, mean, I know. I, I, I'm like so. thinking, like, is there, and, and I know, Sega is the one that make Yakuza, but like I can't think of anything like that on the Xbox. Yeah, but you know? well, what I was trying to allude to is like the fact that Microsoft, even way back in the day in the original Xbox, they tried mm-hmm. to bring over those exclusives, right? Because you remember when the Xbox, the original OG Xbox first launched, they had like six exclusive Sega titles, right? It came with like Panzer Dragoon, yep. Shenmue 2, yeah. Jet Set Radio Future, uh, Sega. Sega GT, yeah. All Sega games. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, you saw them investing in backing like, a studio like Sega, right? And I guess at that at that point in time, it didn't really turn out so well. But now you see Sony doing the same thing and, you know, making good progress from it. So let me yeah, ask you can... this. Uh, does, does 4K gaming, because that's the one thing that Xbox One X, PS4 Pro, all of them are touting 4K <laughs> gaming. 4K, does that matter it, to y'all? Or It's just, like, to me, it's just marketing oh. buzzwords. I mean... I don't have a 4K TV, so it wouldn't even matter. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a term that's very, I think, loosely thrown around. It's like, oh, we have 4K capabilities, but it doesn't mean every game is going to run in 4K. Yeah. Uh, and then on top of that, it's not going to run natively at 4K anyway. So they do like these smoke and mirror tricks to, to render like the resolution at 4K, but it's not true 4K. True 4K. As but opposed ask- to like, you know, playing on a PC, it's like you could do true 4K on that. But do you, have y'all actually even played 4K? I can't. I mean, I've watched 4K TVs. Unless you're like a really stickler for resolution, I can't tell. I mean, honestly, especially for this yeah. a viewing distance, does it matter? I mean, I haven't really messed around with a 4K resolution monitor. 
uh, in person at all, so I can't really speak to it. But I feel like the trend right now in PC gaming is more towards high uh, refresh monitors and ultra wide, where those actually do make a, a huge difference, you know. Because if you ever played anything, so it's, it's kind of like equivalent to the console. So to console to PC, because like when you play on console, it needs to be locked in at like 30 frames a second, right? And then you start mm-hmm. playing at 60 frames per second on PC, and like, oh my god, this is so smooth. And now when you play like at 100 hertz or 144 hertz uh, with these special gaming monitors, it's like another different world on top of that, right? So to me, it's 4K isn't like the biggest concern for PC gamers right now. Uh, one, because the hardware is super expensive to run, and two, I just don't think it feels different enough, say from uh, you know high refresh monitors or ultra wide. So, I mean, barriers. What are you even playing at? Like 1080p? So, <laughs> what? I I don't know. I don't think StarCraft Brutal War even has a 1080p feature. Oh yeah, it's gonna be like 640. No, it's, it should, right? The new one. Oh, uh, yeah, the new one's out. Yeah. Anyways, like I guess this I'm guy just plays old that. games. Yeah. Like when I play most of my comp- my PC games, it's like. 1366 by like 768 or something. You're living like, in like a resolution like 2009. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, like 2009. I, don't know. I really just hate playing like ultra wide <laughs> widescreen games. I don't even like games that has a lot of colors. Like when I play StarCraft 2, I'm always playing like medium. Well, it's because you have the esports kind of drive to you. Like all uh, uh, pro Korean players, they play like 640 by 480 resolution, auto effects. Yeah, man, off. That's not my fault. My CRT monitor can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, so yeah, I mean, to me, like, back to your original question, 4K, is it worth it? Is it, I don't think so. is it hot? Nah. Not until it becomes more widely available. It's kind of weird because, like, a lot of people have to start adopting it, and a lot of people have to start putting out 4K content for it to be mm-hmm. really, like, mainstream, but, you know, 4K's been around for years now, three, four, five years, and look at the adoption rate. I think it's super slow comparative to HD. Yeah, because, I mean, qualitatively, my eyes, I can't, you know, it's not that much of a leap, you know, like, when you yeah. went from, like, a VHS tape to DVD, that was a, that was a huge leap, you know, like, you could, you could tell just by watching, or when you went from the Xbox uh, 360 or the Sony PS3 over to PS4 or Xbox One, I could tell the qualitative difference, you know, but now, except for the Nintendo Switch, I can't. You know, it's not like a big enough difference, you know, I, and even it, if I'm it's like a side grade, if anything, you yeah. know, yeah. So and, you know, most of these games, because the budgets are so high now, it's, you know, they're mostly pumping out the same type of games, you yeah. know, with just yeah. better graphics and it doesn't really do much for me. So, right. OK, so I guess the consensus for people who actually PC game, you aren't worried about the Xbox One X um, actually eating into the PC gaming market. And no. I don't, you know, like I was watching the games and honestly they had exclusives, but there wasn't anything that stuck out. I mean, they had Forza in 4K, but you can already get super high res on the PC anyway. And I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, if Xbox, once again, if they don't bring in the games, then I don't think it's going to sell as well in my right. opinion. Look at the and PS4 the Pro. Who, who, who even, do what? What were you saying, Barry's? I think I read that uh, one of the cool features that um, it has like super backwards compatible. You can play games from like all the way to original. Xbox. Right. Yeah, yeah they, that's they, cool. They, they did yeah. mention that. You know how crazy be? What was it? Uh, that weird mech game with the like two hundred dollar controller it was like. What was it called Steel? Oh Battle yeah, Steel Battalion. <laughs> oh man, like playing that. I don't know if it's gonna have four K, but I don't know. That'd be like a pretty crazy game to play. Yeah. And you know it's funny. Like you have these consoles so powerful, but yet <laughs> the most important feature that they don't add automatically is backwards compatibility. It wouldn't be hard for the hardware to do emulation. You mm-hmm. know, you just stick your Sony disc in. Make, makes a bunch of excuses about that. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know why. And, <laughs> and so even like Xbox One eating, so there's like the two approaches, right? Like Sony with their approach to doing a lot of exclusives. Um, but you should notice Microsoft, they started doing like the cross-play platform a lot more. You know, games where you buy one time, we can play it on both Xbox One and PC. And they can even play online together with each other. Um, yeah. So even Microsoft is aware that like, oh, we have our PC gamer audience, we have our console audience. Instead of trying to segregate them, it tries to bring them together. Um, now, before we go further, I just want to uh, say thank you for uh, Gabe and also KI2E for being on the chat. 
and uh, Gabe says hello and ki 2 and he says the last one I've tried is grid 2 I love grid um, Super, uh, it's a rally game for people who don't know. Uh, I've tried Grid 2 on a super sampled 4K and 120 hertz via a friend. I personally don't see a significant difference as of yet. For me, I would just be okay with 1080p for a long while. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of confirms both of what you were saying. And I think a lot of PC gamers, mm -hmm. there's just not a need for it. And once again, the content is not there, you know? Right. Um, I mean, I, I just go, like, I think about the Sony PS4 Pro. Well, when was the last one? I think there was a game that came out recently that was took advantage of 4K, but nobody cares. I don't think so, you know. And the support's yeah. going down for it, you know. Right, right. I mean, I guess people got it for VR and whatnot. Um, oh, VR. you can even use VR on a regular PS4, right? Is that right? I don't, I don't even remember. You have to buy uh, like a kit. Yeah, for yeah, the regular PS4. Like, like an extra like 400 bucks or something, as far yeah. as I know. Oh yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Oh man, yeah. That's... Um, oh yeah, I'll say this. Like, I have an ultra wide monitor. Um, mm -hmm. Even for gaming, it's it's nice, but it's not worth. If you're trying to game on a budget, then it's not really worth it. <laughs> I mean, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, because you think about it, like these monitors are going anywhere from five hundred to a thousand dollars, which is could be like half the cost of your PC, if not more than that. And mm -hmm. for you to just play at a different resolution like that, it's not worth it. You know, I enjoy because, or I, I like them because of the productivity it brings, you know, because I do more than just game, so. Anyways, um, yeah, so I mean, for now, it'd probably just be, end up like the PS4 Pro. I mean, it'll come yeah. out, it'll make a, a bit of a splash, but nothing game changing to me, really. Yeah, so yeah. it's not even like a, it's not even a new, new console. It's just like a, a like a newer version of that. Right, console, right? It, it's, it's a side grade to me, you know? It's not yeah. like a true upgrade. It's just like a something temporary to hold you over. And, know. you know, I, I just, I really think, like I just said earlier, I think a lot of people are thinking the same way. I think it's the end of, like, consoles as we know it, right? It just can't keep up with technology, you know? Um, I still think maybe Steambox <laughs> might have a chance. I hope they try again because that's what I really want. If there's a console-like mm -hmm. system that you could still upgrade more than a normal console, just like you know, like the RAM and RAM, CPU and GPU. If if it just allows you to do that, that'd mm -hmm. be awesome. You know, at least you could have your console for longer um, than yeah. What you have. I mean, before. you can always build your own like mini ITX system, like the mm -hmm. tiny tiny systems. But uh, I think if they nail down the easy modularity for you know people who don't really want to mess around with screwing stuff in or plugging in you know various cables and wires and whatnot. <clears throat> if, if they could just make some component where it's just like Legos, right? Just like unplug a block, put a new block in. Yep. But um, I mean, it comes with its own host of issues, and sometimes it's just not worth you know the manufacturing R and D cost of that. So until they find like a good medium between you know price and performance, um, you know we'll see. Okay. Yeah. I'll, you know what? I'll, I think, what? What were barriers? I think if it um, if it wasn't for Steam, I think we'll we'll still uh, we'll still be playing on consoles. It's like. If you think about it, when the PS2s and stuff came out, they were a lot cheaper than gaming computers, even computers in general. They're way back, cheaper, yeah. Back then, you get like I don't know, like a basic home computer for about five, five hundred, six hundred dollars. Now you can mm -hmm. get them for like a hundred bucks. And now consoles are more expensive than just your your daily computer. Now, right? So kind of crazy. It, yeah, it's like the price performance ratio between consoles and PCs. Kind of like it's it's skewed. It's changed so much over the years. Like like you mentioned before, when PS2, Xbox came out. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing value proposition for the graphics you can get compared to PC gaming at the time. But now with further advances in, in both hardware and software, PC gaming has got a lot cheaper than it was before. So Yeah, and I and I, I just I go back to my own experience. It's not just the hardware, it's just the mm -hmm. experience. It's so I right. never thought I could just when I first got Steam and you know, once again not playing PC gaming for a long time, I was shocked. I just mm -hmm. downloaded a game on Steam. I pressed play yeah. and it worked. I couldn't believe it. I was like, "Oh, I don't have to download drivers and mess with settings. Yeah. It just worked." So I'm like, we, "We can thank Valve for that." I mean, and the cool thing about Steam is it like downloads drivers for you too before you launch the game in case you don't already have them. Oh, it does. DirectX or yeah, uh, it, it downloads all the libraries. Yeah, it, it basically DirectX. downloads oh. everything you need. Um, libraries like DX if you're playing in Windows. Um, yeah, stuff that's needed. Yeah. 
So they, they really brought a more console-like experience to the PC <laughs> in terms of like less configuration. Um, but you guys remember when Steam first came out, everybody hated it. It was terrible when it came out with like... Oh, it was like a resource hog? 1.6. I think like when Counter-Strike 1.6 came out, everyone's like, I got to install Steam? Like, what is this? And <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's when they made the Switch, too, because you can just like download on their website. Yeah. Just play it. Oh, it's when Half-Life 2 came out, too, I think, is when they uh, yeah, uh, really Half-Life released Steam. Yeah. And uh, yeah, at that point in time, it was it was bad. So they've come a, a far, far way from there since... Yeah, like, yeah, if you don't have Steam on your computer and you're a gamer, then you're not gaming, right? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody has Steam on their computer, even if you're running like Ubuntu, because you even get Steam on Linux now. Yes, and I and I run Linux, and so um, uh, so it's funny. Uh, we just had another person join Tom. He says, "Cool, you're the Linux guy." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's funny that you said that. Yes, um, and that's why I'm absolutely amazed, especially being a I've been a Linux user for like ten years. And I never would have thought that gaming, I would even have gaming. Before, if you wanted to game, you would have to use Wine, an emulator. Yeah. And that's kind of an emulator, but it was horrible. It's a horrible experience, you know? So this is so much better. Um, and speaking of which, I'm so pissed off that Tekken 7, I can't play it. <laughs> it's like, I saw oh, it so on Steam. It's not out for Linux yet. No, I don't think it's, no, it's, don't it's, think it's ever, yeah. yeah. I, didn't, I did play it this past week, and it's pretty good. It's pretty fun. Yeah, it's a pretty fun game. I like Tekken. Uh, have y'all tried Tekken 7 yet, or...? Yeah, I, I played it at Danny yeah, Boxcutter's house. Arcades, oh. Good yeah, time. I played it at my other brother's house. Um, but we're going to go to an arcade pretty soon. It's called Round 1, which is a good Japanese-owned uh, arcade franchise, and they have That's tons awesome. of goofy Japanese games. And I think yep. all of them are getting Tekken 7, so... Yeah, they better get Tekken 7. Yeah. Play, it, play the arcade experience, yeah. <laughs> So, um yeah yeah i mean so now that we're done with xbox one x and we can talk about some just other random e3 stuff so well i mean what are you guys excited for after seeing the e3 everything that came out of e3 i don't know maybe that new dragon ball z game but that's pretty much it uh i guess super mario yeah i mean nothing out there like jumped jumped out I'm like oh that's cool i'm gonna spend a thousand bucks on that no a thousand dollars? What are you buying? Like, how are you gaming? <laughs> you know how uh, what some games are coming out? Maybe it's the new Battlefront, but they have like a collector's edition. It's like a thousand bucks. What? Oh, really? Where do you get yeah. a tank? <laughs> <laughs> I think they only made like fifty of them. That's why they're so expensive. But I'm not even sure. Yeah, oh, I was really like, there's some of these crazy collector's edition that's like being really expensive. A thousand dollars? I'm not that big of a fan. Yeah. I mean, wow. it sounds like a Kickstarter like tier, right? You know, yeah. Those... Call of Duty when they release collector's edition stuff, it's expensive already. I think one of them, I think in Modern Warfare Three, they, it comes with a mask, like a night vision goggle mask. And it was like three hundred bucks when it first came out, or something like that. I don't know, something ridiculous. I and mean, it's more like buy night vision goggles, get a free copy of Modern Warfare Three <laughs> at that point, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I I think the most limited thing that, or one of the most limited things that like have ever come out was the uh, that Wu Tang CD. So I think like the Wu Tang Clan, they made a CD and they only had one copy of it. And um, oh yeah, that was like thirty thousand dollars or something. No, it was more than that. Oh. Who's that one guy? Who's that pharmaceutical guy that everyone hates? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, the one who bought it and it increased the price of the pill to like a hundred times, hundred percent, hundred yeah, yeah. times. Mark, no score. What was his name? <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Anyways, I know the guy. He bought about. he bought the Wu Tang CD. It's just like, oh, I'm never gonna release this. And, like, I'm never gonna play it. Like. Just bought it, just so no one else could have it. So uh, um, Tommy, um, he's asking uh, a question about Linux gaming uh, on Linux Mint. So uh, go ahead. I'll try to answer it if I can, because um, I, I am running Linux Mint eighteen point one, and I'm gaming through Steam and also uh, Mame for my retro games. So uh, for myself, uh, Mario Odyssey and Metroid Four Prime. Like, my brother and I was talking about this before the release of Nintendo Switch that we're going to get one, but then you only had Zelda, <laughs> Breath of Fire. So I was yeah, like, I think the, the Switch was okay. Like, Breath of Wild was pretty cool, but wasn't enough to make me buy a Switch just for one yep. game. But now, all three Zelda, Mario, uh, and Metroid. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's. Oh, can I play Diablo, Diablo on think, Mint? I think, I think you got to run through one. Yeah. D, D3 has Linux support, but I don't think 
Actually, there's no Blizzard games that have Linux support, right? Not I think. Um, I don't think so. Not yeah, I don't. Because I played Brood War through Mint, and I played StarCraft. Not Mint. <laughs> Wine. Through wine, yeah. Through wine, but I, don't, I mean, those are old, but I don't well, think... I, I played World of Warcraft through wine at one point. It was like a long time ago, though. I don't think Blizzard has, has Linux support. It's only uh, OS X and Windows. Hey, so so Barriers, um, what distro are you running, Mint? And are, are, do you do, no, do I you use... I, the distro I was using was uh, Ubuntu Studio, which was just a... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Multimedia uh, distro. distro. To, yeah. yeah to Ubuntu, yeah. I ran that for a couple months. And then I uninstalled it so I can play games on the laptop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you got dual boot, man. Now forget yeah, dual boot, drive, man. Well, I don't want to break the hard drive, right? Yeah, I don't either. Uh, I, 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 especially when you get Windows updates that just so happen to mess up with your boot partition. Nah, forget yeah, it. It happens every once in a while. No. I mean, I'm, 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 like, I'm to the point where I, mean, I haven't used Windows for a long time. I mean, not as my main OS. And so if I need mm -hmm. a Windows machine, I'm buying a separate Windows machine just so yeah. I could have keep it separate. You know, I don't even want it on a separate hard drive on the same computer, you know. So uh, just you could just run a Windows VM then. Yeah, hmm. I, I actually have Windows 10 inside a virtual machine now. Yeah. It was so, so you just do that too. Yeah, but it's not the same. You know, I can't I can't get the full performance, you know. So yeah, if I ever do become a gamer, <laughs> then I'm gonna get me a, a a separate Windows machine. So I think I yeah. do want to fill the Steam box though. Like just Make like a three hundred dollar ITX computer, and just like just run across the original Steam. But I don't know. I mean, I like Ubuntu, I like Linux, and all that stuff. But I need my programs in my games. Yeah, yeah. I did a. I just did an episode the other day. Uh, I talked about five things that I hate about Linux, and not because I hate Linux. It's because like it's not available. And uh, I've talked about stuff like Adobe. It's not available on Linux. Uh, games you can't get all the games you want you can't get all the software that you want on Linux as well so man if they could just fix that it would help a lot you know make Tekken Namco Bandai make Tekken 7 for Linux <laughs> that'll help out a lot yeah and I, mean, I also DJ so it's kind of hard to get good DJ software on the laptop so oh like, yeah yeah so oh so that's why you probably downloaded Ubuntu Studio because it has a lot of audio uh, tools built in already and uh, there is a DJ software for Ubuntu or I guess for all the latest distros, it's called Mix. I mean, it's pretty good, but it doesn't do all that I wanted to do. And I'm I'm a track there guy, so I have to go back to Windows to use track there. So like that's like the only way I can actually use that program is through Windows or Mac. But I don't have a Mac. I don't want that. Hey, you know, Barriers, that's so funny because uh, I have a lot of Linux. I mean, a lot of people who love Linux who watch a channel, and a lot of them ask if you do Pro Audio. I don't know anything about Pro Audio. Like if if you were to do that on Windows versus <coughs> Linux, what are some options that you have to do it if you wanted to uh, co comparable, you know, like how would you do it or what software on would Linux? you use? Yeah, like, or like, like for Windows, what's a pro audio software? And then if you could think like, what are some software that you can use in Linux that might <laughs> be able to do some of the same things? I mean, I guess like Photoshop and GIMP, right? So it's like the, the graphic equivalent. Yeah, for graphics, so, I could talk about the graphics yeah. and video, but for audio, I don't, I don't know anything about. So, I know you can use like LMMS. It's like a Linux multimedia studio, which is kind of like a like a free version of FL Studio, uh, Fruity Loops. Um, I wouldn't say it's like a broke down version of Ableton. I guess because you know Ableton just has a lot more stuff. I haven't seen LMMS since like 2012, but I have seen some people make like really good tracks with it. Um, I think Bitwig, which is made from some of the people from uh, from Ableton, is actually have their own Linux client but i'm like i'm not 100 percent sure on that because last time i checked on that they're like an open alpha but it has been a couple of years you know what? i'm gonna actually google that now yeah yeah bitwig yeah so cool. i mean definitely that's like one of one of the cons of <clears throat> linux is like you don't have the full software suite on there i mean there's just some programs that you just can't or not even used to doing like for me um photoshop like i'm just a photoshop i'm just an adobe guy right and it's kind of a learning curve for me to learn another program, right? Yeah, it's hard to have to, to do both GIMP and Photoshop, exactly. Or or for Microsoft Office, I'm just so used to Microsoft Office, just I use it every day at work. Um, that using LibreOffice is kind of, you know, yeah. I can I can do the, the basic stuff, but then there's some stuff in in Office that like I know how to do super quick. That I don't know how to do in LibreOffice. Yeah, so. and you know, a, a thing that I talked about on that video uh, that I referred to is that even if you're using LibreOffice. It's not 100% compatible with Microsoft Office because of formatting. Right. 
And so even then, even if you were to export it as that file type, that format type, you still don't get 100% compatibility. So for me, I use a lot of open, obviously I'm on Linux, so I use a lot of open source software to replace the, uh, the ones that are on Windows, but it's still not the same when other people are using that software. You know, like if I had to send somebody a Photoshop file, you know, it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna work. Compatibility you know I mean? is not gonna be. Yeah. Exactly, yep. exactly. So it's a pain. Um, ki 2 and he asks, um, I use LMMS, though I've heard of Ardor and Q Tractor. So, though it's all for fun. So, yeah, so. Oh, yeah, I did look it up. Bitwig is actually for Ubuntu. They actually have their own Ubuntu client. So, anyone oh, who's like familiar with Ableton, like Bitwig's the, I guess, the next step to go. But there's also other programs like Ardor, which is what a K, K2NE, K9, cat box looking person. <laughs> yeah. As their. <laughs> As their icon, like Ardor is pretty good, LMS, and then um, Reaper for a lot of editing and stuff. So that's there's a lot of good programs out there. So I guess if you want to do pro audio, like I said, uh, Ubuntu Studio has a lot of them installed already. So like mm -hmm. if you want to get into it like right away, like I'll, I'll get that distro, which is what I was running earlier. Yep. And so, um, you know, I think for people who use Linux regularly, like myself, <laughs> Um, you can find alternatives to use and if you use them at the beginning, then it's a lot easier for you to do what you want Okay, it's just harder like if you are already on the other software and platforms It's really hard to switch You know and especially if you have to work with other people who's using that other software It's like I wouldn't say it's impossible, but it's just really hard yeah, you know? But the one thing I will say that Linux does extremely well is development so, and, and that's one of you know, my reasons of, of switching over to Linux Distro as my main um, work environment, just because when I do development in it, it just works. On Windows, it's just such a pain in oh, the butt. Can, can you explain uh, possibilities? I know you've explained this before, but maybe for the audience, mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. multiple systems that you're running. Can you kind of explain your uh, operating systems and what you're running it for? So Yeah, so my main desktop, I used to do Windows 7, upgraded to Windows 10. Um, but the more I start getting into web development and things like that, there's a lot of just weird gotchas for Windows, things that just don't work, uh, compatibility issues. And at some point, I started. I had to run a VM with inside my Windows 10 installation. And it worked 90% of the time, 95% for most use cases. But there's some times where the VM just wasn't going to cut it. So I decided to start dual booting uh, Arch Linux. And so that's my main work environment right now. So. For Windows 10, the only thing I do in Windows 10 is just play games now. Everything else is in, in Arch Linux. And um, Arch Linux is a pretty lightweight distribution where you install everything on your own. It's just like the bare minimums, and you have That's to hardcore. expand. Yeah, it's kind of, I mean, I don't think it's the most hardcore distro, but because um, there's like a lot of good documentation for it, but it comes really, really, really bare bones. Um, there's not even a UI, it's just all console. It's, it's all terminal until you install your own. You know, UI. Um, but for me, like, like twenty six megabytes or something. Like it's really small too, isn't it? No, it's pretty small. Um, I think like I remember when I first used it on a clean install, it uses like just like two hundred megs of RAM or something like that. Wow. At any given time, yeah. But I mean, as you add more things on like a desktop environment, you're running, you know, Chrome and stuff like that. Of course, usage goes up. But um, it's like running a computer in the eighties. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> it could run out of 486 DS. I don't know about that. Um, yeah, so on my desktop, I have Windows 10. Uh, so it's Arch mainly, Windows 10 uh, for gaming. And then on my Surface Pro, I actually have a similar setup where I have Arch and then also Windows 10. Um, for the Surface Pro, you want to use Windows 10 just because of all the, the touch gestures and things like that. Like, as a tablet, Windows 10 is you know far superior to Linux. Because Linux doesn't have a really good... Um, avenue for for tablets mm -hmm. things like that excluding android right yeah um, and you know ubuntu yeah. was working on that with their uni unity interface but that died mm. i mean yeah. officially it died officially yeah, so yeah. Your, your bunch of phones isn't a thing anymore you know yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, tommy asks what's the best district for beginners i'm always going to say linux mint or ubuntu yeah i think linux mint it's like one of Minutes. the it's easy yeah hungry. yeah mm. all, the, the, all the ones i can think of is probably ubuntu fedora maybe yeah, Fedora. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, KDE. Yeah, but for me, I, I always fall back on Linux Mint. It's so easy, and I don't, 
I don't have to do anything, you know? It's like, I've honestly, I haven't had problems with Mint in such a long time. Like, once it installs, it works. Unless I'm, like, messing with stuff, you know? Arch is discontinuing 32-bit. Uh, KI2NE says yeah. Arch is discontinuing 32-bit yeah. if they haven't already. Yeah. I mean, who uses 32-bit anymore? It's kind of like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no problem, Tommy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I Mint, think he should have... Yeah. Like an upgrade from like when was the first 64 bit was it xp xp had a 64 bit edition didn't they yes like, xp did have bad? one because yeah because that's right around when, it or something was like bad. yeah yeah that's when amd came out with their 64 bit chip was kind of like back then um around that time era man that's a long time ago i didn't realize 64 yeah. bits been around that long <laughs> I didn't know the difference between 64 bit and 32 bit to like 2010. Yeah. I mean, you know, a different sound. What's the difference now? Bit Windows XP on like six gigs of RAM laptop. And I was like, how come it's only reading four gigs of RAM? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, 64 bit lost more. I don't mind that now. But yeah, we kind of dove off topic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sudo, that's super and user do, is basically admin privileges. So. The way I Linux works, it? yeah, super user do. I, didn't yep. know what it I thought it. I didn't know it stands for anything. Substitute user I didn't do. Know what it does. Yeah, yeah. It, it's basically one because like the way Linux works is like you know you have different users, um, Root. and Root. <laughs> yeah, everything like is permission based. It's, it's a lot more hardcore than Windows. Windows permissions is almost a joke at this point. Yeah, um, admin yeah, all the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you got to be careful with sudo because you don't want to run around everything as sudo because you can really mess up your system. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, so we got a bit off topic. So we never finished up on E3, so like trailers and stuff. Um, yeah, we've been anyways, like 41 minutes in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like the most excited stuff for E3 is, is Nintendo Switch, you know, like we mentioned. When it first came out, you only had like one or two games. And then we heard issues about this, the hardware. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I, I wanted to put it off, right? Like, oh, I heard, like, it warps a little bit. Like, um, it scratches kind of easy and, and things like that. But now all these games coming out, like, I don't yeah. want to wait for it. Because, I, like, originally I wanted to wait for a second revision of the console to come yeah, out. Yeah, the second gen Switch. Should have been yeah. lighter, you know, better battery life. Well, screen, you know, screen, yeah, well and, you know, and there was also, like, throttling on the CPU as well. I mean, CPU yeah. and GPU. Yeah. Yeah, then they released a patch for that. <laughs> They like did a lot of. They released a couple stability patches when it first came. Yeah, out. I'm sure they did. Um, but there's still like physical hardware stuff that you know, like I don't, I don't know how bad it is. Though. Like I heard warping, right? Because like the console would heat up and then you put it in a dock and then like the plastic would kind of just. Warp yeah, I think I, I think I heard about. I think I read about that, but yeah. I don't... And then we had like um, controller issues with the with the Bluetooth. But but with all the games coming out, like I don't want to wait anymore. So, like, I don't want to wait. Two three years for that second revision to come out. Yeah, I mean now that they've for me now that they've announced both Mario and Metro Four Prime, it's a done deal. I mean, I'm gonna get one. You know, yeah. that's what I was waiting for. I was waiting for the trifecta. That's a trifecta mm -hmm. for me. So yeah, I, I, I can't wait. Um, yeah. I'm I'm still. I mean, I I've never really been impressed with Nintendo hardware. I mean, the last time I was really impressed was the Nintendo sixty four because mario yeah. 64 was so amazing you know but yeah i the games i just i just have to have all those three so it's pretty awesome yeah and i think nintendo did it right this time because when wii u came out they, they didn't do anything right the hardware wasn't great the, yeah the library wasn't great like nothing was too good about wii u but this time around i feel like they're more focused i mean they came up with their hardware at the right time and a lot mm -hmm. of games now they've had to have been working on it for a while right so they probably saw this I mean, maybe a lot of these games used to be on Wii U and they just ported over, but yeah. regardless, um, I, I just think they're doing it right this year. So, you know what? Which is I good. haven't. It's good to see. I maybe I haven't seen anybody out in the public with the Nintendo Switch like portable mode. Have y'all seen anybody like do that playing out? Um, really? Yeah, one, one of our friends has one. Yeah, yeah, one of our friends has like actually like two or three of our friends have them, right? Like, and they bring them over when we hang out and stuff. Um, oh. When I was playing DDR the other day, someone brought their Switch, and we were just playing Mario Kart when we were waiting. So that's pretty cool. Oh. Um, okay. Yeah, it, it's actually it gets me pretty interested. Like if someone has one in public, like oh yeah, let's play. You know, it kind of it, it brings like that couch experience. You know, outside, <laughs> which is is interesting. Wow. 
So that, that's what I was interested in, the portability. So y'all have mm -hmm. seen people play it. I haven't seen anybody yeah, play yeah. it. I mean, we played Mario Kart at a graduation party. Yeah, yeah. One of our friends just brought Mario Kart and we were just like taking weeks. turns playing Mario Kart. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. And again, like I said, like I played it with another guy who brought it when we were waiting to play DDR because we you know we're, we're waiting our turns and, you know, in between Apparently, sets. Apparently, in your pocket. I've seen people put them in their pockets. So like, <laughs> like, <"All right>, cool. <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty cool because it's like it's so easy to jump in like hey you want to play a quick round mario kart here we go here's the control like man yeah and then even when you pause it like or you, you know you uh, put on hold to like turn the screen off and save battery you just turn it back on and it's just like resumes right there it's really seamless oh, wow. it's not like you know you start up you boot up you reload everything you just like nope just you know put it on lock and unlock it and that's it and it works um it's so simple so nice so cool. yeah it's fun but uh i'm gonna be traveling overseas pretty soon and I want to get one for that. I mean, it's going to be a really long plane ride, so I feel like if I had Switch there, it would make it way better. Are you going to get the colorful Joy-Cons? The one with the colorful Joy-Cons? Uh, maybe we'll see. Um, but yeah, so many good games coming out for that. Mario looks really good, just because it's it's not only like a return to kind of like that Mario 64 style, mm -hmm. um, but they're adding so many new and interesting elements to the gameplay itself, right? And that's what Mario has always been about. It's just like really 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 solid fun simple yeah, you know, um, yeah. But, but extremely well refined you know gameplay and i'm so glad that um they showed more of the different worlds and it reminds me yeah. of super mario brothers too because you're like in a different fantasy world you know mm -hmm. uh except with mario oh, yeah, 64 yeah. elements i'm like man that wow i can't wait i mean i'm yeah I said that before about the Switch, but just with Zelda alone wasn't enough. But I mean, actually, yeah, you, you'll see me with the Switch. I mean, yeah. I don't know how long I'm going to play it, but if it's as good as everybody says it is. And, you know, Nintendo, they rarely make bad games. And so I can't yeah. wait. Um, yeah. No, so, I think they're coming out super strong this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so funny. I did, I did not expect them, to, in my opinion. I think they were the best thing out of E3. That, yeah. I, that was, I thought it was going to be boring. You know, like Nintendo, ah, uh, you know, it's... Yeah, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I kind of thought PS, the Sony was going to bring it, the big mm -hmm. guns, because every year they're usually the ones to lead, you know, but this year I think it was the Nintendo Switch and mm -hmm. then Xbox One X. That's, I didn't I, care about anything else because, with Xbox. Because Sony, there was like no surprises. They've already announced all this stuff. There wasn't any like crazy thing that came out. They just had trailers for stuff that we mm -hmm. already knew about, like God of War. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's true. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know, man. I, so, I, I mean, we were, we were excited for that, like, last year, so we're not excited for it this year, but Nintendo was like, no one expected all the stuff that was going to come out, really. Yep, nobody. And, you know, I'm really surprised that Sony did that. That every yeah. year, they're at least... They, and they have a lot of games. We talked about they have a lot of exclusives, mm -hmm. but all the stuff that we're showing, you've already seen, <laughs> or they won't be out till next year. Like, what do you got mm -hmm. this year? You don't really have anything this year, really. Right. You know, you have, like, the... Um, with the Naughty Dog game... Uh, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying Nathan's Nathan Drake I can't remember yeah. the name Crash now but he, he was in like Crash Bandicoot right oh, yeah. oh no 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 Um, the, the other game I can't even remember the name the, the most popular one uh, uh, you know what I'm talking about yeah I know uh, what you're talking about yeah god I can't believe I can't remember the name yeah I'm brain 40 right now yeah I don't know you, talking about. Uncharted Uncharted yeah, yeah. there's a, there's a spinoff of Uncharted with the female characters that's right. the, about the only thing coming out this year. And yeah. Crash Bandicoot is coming out at the end of June. So that's going to be sweet. Yeah. It's got all three I games. Mean, but we've known, again, we've known about that for a long yeah. time. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. The God of War stuff we saw last year. Mm -hmm. um, and Spider-Man 4, I mean, it looks cool, but uh, yeah, it's, not gonna, yeah, it's not going to make me go out and buy a PS4. Just yeah. for that, you know. <laughs> Uh, so, but two games that came out that I'm really excited for because I love uh, single player FPSs were uh, Wolfenstein 2 looks super good. Yeah, that, that, that looks pretty Wolfenstein sweet. 2 looks amazing. The, the first Wolfenstein or the reboot was one of my favorite FPSs of all time. And then on top of that, Metro, the new Metro game. And Metro is also one of my favorite FPS the same franchises. Metro game? Like Metro 2033 or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Metro 2033, 2034, and the latest one, 2035. Man, those games are so good. So like when I, when I saw those two FPS games, I'm like... All right, yeah. Because I haven't played, I haven't really like sat down and played a game in a really long time. But those are two games that I wanted to sit down and just like blast through them. And the new XCOM two DLC looks pretty good too. Cool. I'm gonna have you to play XCOM like too. SRPGs. 
Yeah, XCOM yeah. 2 is good. Yeah. It's uh, it's frustrating as all hell, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I won't spoil it too much for you, but uh, I'll just let you figure it out for yourself when you, when you talk about it when you get there. Um, but yeah, so I mean, E3 this year, it's pretty cool. Some some nice stuff coming out. It was um, I. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I thought it was boring, except yeah. for it, except for Nintendo, unsurprisingly. And I mean, then, surprisingly, uh, I'm sorry, surprisingly. Uh, <laughs> Square, uh, Square Enix, like they always release games, but they're not even they haven't even started developing them yet. Like, well, Kingdom they released three. They're gonna bad, bring out a. Uh, they're, good, they're gonna. Where they get? They're gonna bring out a VR fishing game, a Final Fantasy VR fishing game. Oh man! Oh, yeah, based off uh, the 15. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> That's when you know they. They could have been released like Kingdom Hearts three and stuff. Yeah. I know. You know that's when they ran out of ideas. I'm like, you know, Sony was showing all these VR games which were mostly crappy looking, and then, ooh, Final Fantasy fishing. I'm like, what? It's an F, man. It need three Fs. F F F. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? It might be a bestseller. Um, I, I, that makes me think about the Dreamcast with the fishing pole. <laughs> There's a fishing game yeah. I, I had. Pro that. Like a bass fishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bass fishing pro. Man, that was. And Marine. Sigma Marine was really good too. Oh, those games are yeah. so fun. Yeah, Seaman. Seaman. No, not, not that game. That game was weird. <laughs> I, was, I was about to say, is that the one where you talk to the fish on the microphone? Yeah. yeah. It's just Leonard, Leonard Nimoy. Leonard Nimoy. Nimoy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was so funny. That was a funny game. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so E3 is, is I. Yeah. It's all right, stuff coming out. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm not too excited other than like Nintendo Switch. I, I need to get my hands on one. Okay, since, uh, uh, since we're all still in, in gaming, uh, Barriers, uh, he knows a little bit about eSports. Wait, what? I mean... What, what, is, what is your experience with eSports, yeah. Barriers? How did you get into eSports? What draws you to eSports? Oh man, I could like talk all night about this stuff. Yeah. Um, all right, let's see, let's see. So you, you started off with Yoshi's Cookie, right? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it was uh, StarCraft that brought me into it, like in like towards the end of my high school career, like before I graduated, it was, like 2008 or 2007, when I was like on YouTube, you know, like YouTube just got big, or it's starting to get big, like it. Like when it first came out, I was like, all right, I want to watch some StarCraft videos. And somehow I got into like the pro scene in Korea. And I was like, what the hell? People are playing this game for money. Like, like back then people were like, no, nah, don't play games. You know, you get addicted, you lose your job, lose your kids, your wife, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> now, 2017, almost 10 years later, you're making big bucks, investing in the esports, having your own teams, organizations, you know, the whole big kabam. Like 2017, man. Esports is gonna be a thing. It's gonna be a thing for probably for I don't know. As long I would as argue it's been games. a thing. You know, it's been a thing for a while now. It's just getting more and more um, momentum, at least. TBS has had E League for Street Fighter Five, CS:GO. They want to do stuff for Overwatch. Mm -hmm. like, what? The first time esports was on TV, I want to say it was like esports, esports, but they had like the Halo champs on ESPN at one point, and then like mm -hmm. the Madden, the Madden series, but it didn't like kick off until like. Heroes of the Dorm, you know, the Collegiate League for Heroes of the Storm, that was on ESPN, yeah. I guess. I think that kind of pushed it up, pushed it up, and then a lot of esports has got keep being on TV. Like, mm -hmm. League of Legends, I think at one point was on ESPN3, wasn't it? The LCS? Uh, for US, it may have been, but I mean, all over the world, you know, people or TV places will play it. And uh, sure. Korea is known as the esports yeah. capital of the world. Like, I went to Korea, Echo. and I went to live stadiums to watch live StarCraft matches, and it's pretty hype. Oh man, how, how was that? Like, how, how was that experience? Like, can you kind of give the viewers an idea of what it feels like to be in the home base of esports? All right, so imagine you're gonna go see like your favorite college football team playing football, and like you see all these their pro players like walk out to the field, you're like, giving people handshakes and stuff. All right, think that, but with a bunch of people walking out with their keyboards, and I'm like fangirling out, like, oh my god, that guy. He's a pro StarCraft player. I'm like, it's you know. It's because you've seen these people from a distance for so long, right? Like, you watch their videos, you follow them, like, at, at whatever time social media was back then, forums, I guess. And now, and for you to see him in person, it's kind of like, well, I'm, it's like you've known that guy for, like, two, three years, but this is, like, the first time you've seen him in person, right? It's, it's like, the first time we went to QuakeCon, we saw Fatality. Like, we didn't, like, meet him, but we saw him. And I was like, dude, that's the, the Quake Pro, man. Like, oh, my God. Like his own sound card and everything. Yeah, it has his own, like... 
motherboard and stuff. Like it's crazy. So Man. was it in Seoul, Korea? And how many Seoul, people Korea? would you like guess were there? Like in the um, audience? What game did you watch? One of those. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like a friendly. It was like a league match. You know how like in like in soccer you get like sixteen weeks and it's just like one of those normal games. It wasn't like a like a finals or anything. A tournament, or, yeah. So I, it, the, when I went to go watch, it was a full house, <laughs> and um, I had to even stand in the back with like thirty other people like outside the door. It was packed, like no more seats. And it, at that time, before they got their new esports stadium, I think it seated maybe a hundred people. So at that day I was watching, it was probably like 150, and people were like still walking by trying to get in. But now they have like a bigger esports team that can probably hold like thousands. But when they do um like finals, like for like League of Legend finals or even StarCraft two finals, they, they do it at like stadiums or even like like big rooms, auditoriums where they can no, see like thousands. Basketball of stadiums, stadiums, yeah, like Staples Center, Madison Square Garden, um, these huge venues. So, uh, you know, I heard like, or I've seen on YouTube and stuff like how many internet cafes there are dedicated to gaming and even the Korean government is investing in esports. It's, yep, that's the thing, Korean Esports Association. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, they're, they're so into esports that like if you get caught, I mean, this, there has been a couple of cases where if you match fix, you can actually go to jail and stuff for that. Say what? <laughs> You could go yeah, to jail. Like, yeah, 2010 was the first StarCraft. Like they they match fix for betting websites, and like you, you you can get banned from professional gaming in Korea. And then like, cause Kespa is so big, there was one guy that tried to play in a tournament in China, but China banned him because he was like, oh yeah, we heard about your reputation in Korea. Like we don't want you here, you know. And wow. And then the last one happened like a uh, a couple years ago with StarCraft 2 Pro. This guy actually went to jail, mm -hmm. and. I mean, he made a lot of money, but you know, it doesn't really worth much when you're in jail. So, but yeah, it gets pretty serious over there. Like, yeah. match fixing, even betting on yourself, even oh, betting's illegal in Korea, anyways. But like, esports betting is still a thing, but it's pretty serious in Korea. It's considered a crime. Right, and even like most online gaming accounts, you need a Korean social security number, right, to sign up for online accounts. Yeah, that's true too. You have to have a KS a KSSN. So, a lot of the yeah. games that you play, a lot of the games that they play require you to have their own you, you yeah. when you have to make an account on like nexon and korea you have to have like a phone number wow um, you korean social security number it's because uh not it's not xenophobic i don't want to say that that's not their correct word but they're they're kind of closed so yeah. like they only want like people to play on their servers i guess it makes sense because yeah. if i was playing on the korean server i'll probably get lagged out plus, anyways. plus i think they only want like one account per person right? yeah that is yeah that's true because I, I think they're I think they're about to make it illegal. Uh, they call it boosting is when you play other people's accounts. So they'll pay you money to get a higher rank. But wow. you, you didn't achieve on your own, right? You're paying someone else to basically do it for you. Uh, I think they're about to make that illegal in Korea, actually. So since Korea is still like the place for esports, um, you know, I've seen some matches. They had like <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal on there commentating on esports. And oh, so Street Fighter 5. You know, Street yeah. Fighter. And so I know it's going to be big here in the U.S. as well, but it's not there yet. And so, you know, you mentioned, well, you mentioned about money, right? So what are like top league players getting paid now on average? So oh, I would Baker, say... You know about Faker, Kenny. Tell him about, yeah. about Faker. Um, so much money. Yeah, so not only do you get paid a salary to play on a team, but you also think about sponsors. Um, when you stream, you get... You basically get donations from people who watch your stream. You get ad revenue. Um, you partner up with, you know, other companies. They can, you know, pimp their products and whatnot. I would say salary alone, if you're on a pretty decent team, anywhere from like seventy to mid six figures easily, just for playing on a team. And then you factor in tournament winnings, um, sponsorships, and things like that. If you're, you know, top of the top in the U.S., I'd say probably two hundred, three hundred annually, easy. I know Flash, a uh, professional StarCraft player who still plays. Um, at one point, um, before he, before KT got him, apparently they bought his contract for 300k, so mm -hmm. just to play StarCraft. So yeah. that's it's pretty. And that was like seven years ago. Wow. And people are still getting like um, if you're playing like really big professional teams. Um, I don't know how it is now because like you know the 76ers, the the basketball team, right? They bought they got, Dignitas. Yeah. Yeah, they they got the Dignitas roster. 
and I don't know how how much yeah. they're getting paid, but um um in the new NBA game it's having their own league. It's called the NBA 2K E League or something like that, and it's gonna be here in America. And like a lot yeah. of the professional NBA teams actually gonna have their own esports team for it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like, so you'll see a lot of like basketball teams investing early. I think they're the first like that and in in Europe they have various soccer teams that have been putting yeah, money into yeah, these teams. Team um, we like Team Liquid is backed by I think Celtics and Golden State owners. Um, Say what? Yeah, Dignitas is 76ers. Um, trying to get close. Wow. It's like investing in a team. I know, like, if you're if you follow football, like FC Schalke, they have a, a team. They're like a pretty big uh, a soccer team in Germany. Uh, Paris Saint PSG, Paris Saint Germain. They have yeah, a yeah, league yeah. team. They're pretty big in France too. Um, yeah, so there's definitely money coming into it, and for for traditional sports to invest the kind of money they're investing now, it's a drop in a bucket for them. You know it's extremely cheap right now for them to invest. And I think yeah, esports just captures this really hard demographic that was hard to capture before, which is males 18 through 24. And it makes sense because that's like what the traditional sport demographic wants, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe one day we'll see esports as big as, you know, football. You know how people go crazy yeah. over football. I think, no, I it, mean, it will be, yeah. Yeah, I think it'd become bigger because these, all these sports organizations, and I, I, I like how you mentioned international, you know, foot, uh, soccer and, they already know it's going to be bigger right and so that's why they're investing in it that's why you have professional sports athletes commentating on it and so mm -hmm. and you know like you know the big companies right like tencent tencent uh mm -hmm. the chinese company i mean yeah. we think we think like online gaming and stuff is big over here but like their user base two three hundred million is larger than the whole population of the united states and that's mm -hmm. like that's that's not even their whole user base which is kind of ridiculous if you think about the potential of money that they could make out of that right you know and so yeah it's tension right the chinese company yeah they're, yeah. yeah they're the largest one if i'm not mistaken when it yeah, comes and they to own game. they own like 90 percent of league legends or something like that they, they own riot games pretty much yeah and if, if you even look at tournament prize winnings i think like the last what was the last dota 2 tournament um, or international prize pool no oh, isn't the international supposed to be happening soon yeah, I think so. Yeah, but anyways, like the last international was like twenty, thirty million dollars, right? Whoa! It, it depends on the year, but they do get pretty big. Hold on, let me check real quick. Yeah, because they have a uh, in-game tickets, I guess, or like you know, like in-game stuff. And every time people buy it, it goes towards a price pool. Price pool, right? And so I guess right now the price pool right now is 15, yeah. almost sixteen mil. And Hasn't even started yet. Doesn't yeah. start until August. Yeah. What? Oh, that's ridiculous. And, and then you even think about that. So that's they do it every single year, right? And even that is still a drop in the bucket for these companies. You know, I think that's it's a sizable amount of money, but these online gaming companies are making so much more than you know we can imagine. Um, because like a, a lot of these games, you can buy in-game skins, right? And I think mm -hmm. like the last League of Legends tournament, I think it's like ten percent of all proceeds uh, from this skin purchase went to the prize pool, and that ended up being like twenty million from one skin. 10% wow. of one skin was like 20 million or something like that. So, oh, that's crazy. Yeah, are hundreds of millions of dollars. And so, for them, I mean, you just see the amount of money in here and the amount of money to invest and get started is like, is so, it makes sense, right? <laughs> if you have it. Um, plus, these traditional sports teams, they can come in and they can come in with their experience as a sports organization, right? To field rosters, coaches, mm -hmm. to give them the support structure they need and to give them everything they need to excel as athletes you know even though it's computer games athleticism they still have the structure to help people do that so ki 2 and e asks so that begs the question that would esports in the future would encounter problems like with real physical sports oh yeah i mean definitely so injury burnout retirement uh, we already see a lot of those things so for like injury i could see a uh, carpal tunnel right if yeah, you don't take care tunnel. of your your wrists you can you can get injured like that very easily um i lost uh, maybe uh, eye like, vision, I don't you're know. Playing, like CS:GO, there's like a bunch of like you know flashes going on, and maybe you get like a, an epileptic like, seizure. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's happening, but it could happen. I'm just I, saying. I think you figured out a lot earlier <laughs> before going pro. I, uh, I, I, I did yeah. see this uh, this show where they were showing like the esports scene, um, where they they had these training boot camps, and they were like playing 15, 16 hours a day just for training. Oh yeah, definitely. And so yeah. that goes back to burnout too. Like the the reasons why Koreans are so dominant is because they have 
extremely hardcore training regimes. We, we are talking about 15, 16 hour days, you know, without break. Um, anyways, so, and then you, you got to think about career uh, lifespan too, right? You know, some of these programmers only program for two or three years. And then what do you do after that? You know, a lot of these are younger kids too, who don't get their secondary education at a university or college. So they'll play games for two or three years and then they're going to miss out on a lot of life skills that they could have learned, yeah. you know, in that, in that's that time. A, that's a really, that's a huge problem in Korea too. Yeah. Um, there's a couple documentaries like you can just probably just go on YouTube. There's but there's, probably, there's a lot of good documentaries out there, like how most of these kids are in pro teams. They live at the pro houses where they train with their team. Um, their only social activities, either with their teammates or they go out like once a week on like a Sunday where they don't play games and like they don't like know anybody. That's why they're like really shy when it comes to talking to other people, like even girls. Um, when I when I was at a StarCraft professional professional match. But I guess they're kind of used to it, but I guess they still don't know what to do. So they just stand there like all awkwardly, like, oh, what are we supposed to do? Do I say hi? Like, they'll say hi and be like, oh, hey. Like, You're like a, a world famous pro gamer and you're just like, uh, what do I do? <laughs> but I, I, I kind of, it's getting better now, I guess. Well, I kind of thought these, some of these pro gamers in Korea, they're like, they're celebrities. And so I, I see yeah. some of them. Yeah, like, yeah, some are. Some are. Yeah, yeah. they're like, example, yeah, they're hooking yeah. up with like K pop superstars and stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, they're on TV commercials and so many yeah. fangirls. And I guess uh, in some cases, like for Faker, he's probably used to it with all his fangirls he's getting. But um, he's still like a little awkward. But he's really like humble. Well, oh, he needs to be really modest. He needs to be humble. But now he's just like, well, I'm world champion three times over. I can say I'm the greatest. So I think I was watching this clip of like you know how they introduce players to the to their computers and like some fan had his hand up and the guy walked to his computer was like what is this and he just walked off like you should give my high five man what are you doing <laughs> like i guess like they're just so used to sinking in their game like i i wouldn't yeah. really esports maybe through like professional racing because like most racing i would say it's not very i don't know the only so thing i can think of is more concentration like you want to concentrate on the road so like a lot not everything's like physical like compared to like football and soccer and stuff but in like esports it's uh, mostly concentration you're working with your hands well maybe maybe there's no downtime you know like with basketball and football you have like the quarters and you have pause or you know you have downs so you have like time to just like reset for a second but in gaming for the most part it's never really like that i mean you may have a pause but it's normally like anywhere from 10 to 50 minutes just straight concentration yeah true that um but yeah you know it's like some other issues so we talked about like burnout right some players they don't want to practice 16 hours a day you know they can only do that for a couple of years um and at some point there's so many like the the pool to be a pro athlete to be a pro esport athlete it's like a lot easier than to be like a professional football player professional soccer player so you have this huge pool of people to pull from from like amateurs coming up and just being better than you you know like you really have to keep up your skills for a long time um and it's hard to do i think nowadays in certain games Network maintenance. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely for, for games. I mean, that's more of a technical issue, right? Where you just have to be able to cater to millions and millions of people. But I think for the most part, most modern online games, they have it pretty locked down, right? I know League of Legends had like a lot of issues with expanding their network capabilities, but I think they've since ironed it out. Yeah, you know, it's so funny, like both of y'all talking about, you know, for people like myself who doesn't understand the esports community, just mm. the fact that off the skins alone, you're making like tens of millions of dollars just off of 10% yeah. of that, right? And so right. when I think about the population, let's just say China, right? There's mm. billions of people there and it's like still untapped, right? Because Korea is still the leader. But I imagine China or mm. India. It's not, I want to say it's untapped because you have these uh, Chinese billionaires investing into these teams as well. Sure. You look at the you look at the gaming peripheral markets like key, like gaming keyboards, gaming mices. You know, you see those explode in just abundance now too. Like people have taken notice. Um, oh yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that it doesn't yeah. exist there, but I'm just saying it becomes more and more popular. And gaming in Asia, it's a lot more prevalent. You know, not just console, mm -hmm. PC gaming, but even mobile gaming. It's a lot more prevalent. I'm just saying mm -hmm. like the amount of population there when it becomes even more mainstream all around the world you can mm -hmm. imagine like the insane amount of money i'm pretty sure there's going to be billionaire esports players and definitely esport uh, owners of leagues they're going to be multi multi oh, yeah, yeah, definitely um, yeah yeah it, it's a i think 
a crazy exploding market right now and if you have the money to invest now i think it's fairly cheap but at the same time it's still a little volatile right we don't know if this like the bubble's gonna burst or like because in order to continue your esports scene like you need games worth playing right you need to still capture the interest of people so you like i don't know um barriers could talk about this like the transition from starcraft 1 to starcraft 2 what happened there because starcraft 1 used to be like the de facto esport right then starcraft 2 came out and it didn't really follow in its footsteps you know yeah that's true starcraft 2 is still pretty big <clears throat> i mean the only reason why it's still big now is because blizzard has their own circuit for it the wcs they also have it for um or for hearthstone is the their hearthstone world circuit circuit and then for heroes of storm is heroes global circuit or the championship so but rude war the first starcraft game that pretty much made esports esports it's still pretty big they still play it online it's still pretty big in korea um so if you like look at the um like what you said earlier about the internet cafes in korea if you look at the list like the top 10 games played like brood war will still be up there like pretty much above starcraft 2. but i mean like the point i was trying to get at was you need a good game right because like games will, will come and go you know a game will be popular for two three years you need a game with like lasting power right? so league of legends it's been going on for this is like its seventh season right now i think which is oh, like, like around seven years beta so, yeah. For a while. yeah like 2010. right but what happens when another game comes along right or what happens when league just loses its its uh draw power right then you need like another game to come take its place so it's still a little volatile in that sense. Um, I mean, it's, it's it's stable for now, but we don't know in the next five years what the, the big game is going to be that we're all going to be playing. But <laughs> if you say it like that, but they got to be like a, a new, new game. Maybe that's like different. Like fighting games, there's always been tournaments, right? Street Fighter, for example, Tekken, still pretty big thing. Um, RTSs wise, I would say the most popular ones are still StarCraft. I guess they still, they still kind of play Age of Empires professionally, but not like... Not like a big pro team, but you know, amateur cups and stuff. Yeah. Um, League of Legends, they still played the original Dota. They still played the original Dota. It, that's pretty crazy. Right, but I'm just saying, like. Rocket League, maybe. It's it's. There's a there's a, a potential. There's a chance for it to maybe not have the same power as like a traditional sport, right? Yeah. That's all I like. Competing on that, we haven't really seen it. I mean, other than like StarCraft Two, right? It was supposed to be big, and it it, it maybe was big for a little bit, but. After some time, it kind of just fizzled out. I don't know, man. If RuneScape becomes an eSport, then anything can be an eSport. <laughs> right, but the the question is, like, how long is it going to be an eSport? How much money is it going to make? How many people are going to watch it, right? Well, as, as long as kids still want to play games, yeah, anything can be an eSport. I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Minecraft becomes an eSport. I don't know. They can oh, yeah. make Minecraft oh. competitive. <laughs> Speaking hey, of which, the yeah, <laughs> Sorry. My, Microsoft is releasing their super-duper graphics uh, Minecraft. By the way, in 4K, so who knows? Of course, you have so <laughs> oh, many titles. Yeah, 4K <laughs> Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, but you were a pro Yoshi's Cookie player at one point, were you? Man, Yoshi's Cookie's hard. I, I switched <laughs> to Tetris Attack for a little bit. Played in a tournament, lost super hard. Um, I don't know. I played a bunch of random games, even though they have like a small tournament following. Like, um, I don't know. I played chess online competitively for a while. That was That was pretty hard, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, you're playing against like probably grandmasters. <laughs> yeah, like their elo is super higher than mine. I mean, I play poker professionally. Not maybe not professionally, but I play competitively. Yeah, like, I, I earned my invite to Vegas, um, stuff like that. Um, I played Quake. I pretty much any, any game that has a tournament, I'll try to play in it. I know I'm gonna lose, but you know, if it's if you go to um, ESOGaming.com or is it .net, um, ESO is the um, you know the world's biggest esports organizations. And they have tournaments for every game probably you can think of. They have one for FIFA Mobile, like the the mobile version of FIFA for your phone. What? They have tournaments for that game. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, uh, and you know, for e for people, um, I remember ESL as English as a second language. <laughs> so when you said ESL, <laughs> someone like what? <laughs> you got a new yeah. ESL game? What? Yeah. Oh, Rosetta man. Stone. Yeah, ESL is a lot bigger than <laughs> I Rosetta thought. Stone. <laughs> yeah. The new Rosetta man. Stone game. I don't know, like. <laughs> There's a bunch of random games like like TCG will always be competitive like Hearthstone. Magic the Gathering's been around since like what 93 and they're still yeah, playing that competitively. Pokemon. Pokemon, yeah. Clash Royale was pretty much an esports now. There's a game called Disc Jam people are playing competitively. Modern Combat 5, Hacksball, Ball 3D. People are playing a game called Ball 3D competitively. Like 
So it's never going to end then. I, I just, I don't see it going anywhere. I mean, <laughs> I think it's always been there, like these, these competitive communities, but now that we have the internet and streaming, we can make it a lot more widely available, right? And so I think now we start to see it pop up everywhere. Yeah. I just found out that Total War Shogun 2 has a competitive scene. <laughs> what? Is Civ 5 yeah. competitive? Competitive uh... Civ 5, Civ 6 or whatever? Yeah, didn't Team Liquid get like a Civ 6 team or something? Yeah, they're like, they're going to start streaming competitive Civ 6 or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, so a lot of games, man. There, there's definitely a lot of games, but I think not all of them make it to that esports status where, you know, it's like a household name, right? And yeah, we have our, our feed. Like Counter Strike, um, League of Legends, Dota, Dota. Um, maybe World of Tanks, but I don't know, like Russia and stuff. Uh, yeah, in Russia, maybe. Because I think France recently just got their own esports channel. Korea already have their esports channel. Mm -hmm. China probably has some too. Oh, so they have actual channels dedicated to esports twenty four seven. Yep, on Game Net. There used to be two in Korea, but on Game Net's the biggest one. Um, they wow. they play um, variety shows like uh like documentaries, following esports around, or just you know general gaming shows, and then they'll, they'll play uh, matches, mm -hmm. like live matches. So, like, the culture yeah. is definitely shifting too, especially with the the younger generation where they're growing up with video games and streaming. It's just become a, a norm for them now. So wow, yeah, so that, that's amazing to me. Um, you know, you only when I first saw it on. TV like ESPN and TBS. That's when I knew like okay, <laughs> this is pretty crazy. Yeah. When I first, I couldn't yeah. believe it. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. cool. It's only gonna get bigger from here. Um, hopefully, like as long as we have quality games, you know, as long as we have that support, I think oh, it'll yeah. always be here. Well, so hopefully, one, like one of the biggest reasons why because we grew up in the uh, the internet generation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like we grew up when the console boom it, just like happened and video game became a thing and it, internet was the biggest thing like we couldn't have these tournaments without live streaming and then it just took off right and i, I think it's kind of comparative to like applications like or social media networks right like before myspace needs to be like the the social network right and then like facebook you know overtook it and myspace is nothing now mm. i think a lot of these games they try to be similar like that too they want to be that like that one hit wonder right like that overnight unicorn right uh not every game will get there we, you see a lot of people trying and trying to recreate the, the success that these bigger esports have, but they don't get like anywhere near there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Like, you should want to compare. Like, Facebook is kind of like League of Legends. It's huge. It's, I think it's going to be there for quite some time. But something could always come around and de dethrone it. Right. We just mm -hmm. don't know yet. But I think gaming as a whole, it's not. It's not going to get smaller. And so I think esports no. gaming, yeah. regardless e of the game, yeah, it's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. it, it's going to get so massive that it's just going right. to be normal for you to go to esports right. events inside your your every city. You know, mm -hmm. there's. I mean, it's like having a smartphone, right? It's, having a smartphone yeah. is normal now, and there's always going to be more and more apps, right? There's never going to be like any less apps. It's just the next big app. We don't know when it's coming, right? Like Snapchat or like well, Instagram, I'm... right? I'm just waiting to see. Man, I don't know if Korea's already done it. They start having esports degrees. You know, like you would go to school to learn about esports. Even in the U.S., you can get uh, scholarships for esports right now. Yeah, so. here you can get scholarships for esports. Yeah. What? They have a uh, yeah. You can get scholarships for esports. They have uh, even some classes kind of catered towards esports. But yeah, there's wow. a school in Florida that has like a couple esports classes, mm -hmm. but I don't think they have like an esports degree. But you yeah. Um, can win scholarships and stuff to play video games yeah and then yeah and there's a lot of collegiate leagues too right so that's starting to become a bigger that's thing so now you, know, you get a full <laughs> ride to your favorite university to play whatever esport you want for them oh man are you okay so if that's the case then no kid's not going to want to go to college <laughs> it's like i'll go to college i get a scholarship yeah. man we can have like a whole episode about esports we can just talk about esports <laughs> like there is this kid in high school. I think he just graduated. Played Overwatch like nine hours a day. His family hated him. You know, like, hey, you got to throw your life away just to play video games. But then some team was like, oh, hey, we'll offer you a salary and stuff. You come play for us. And mm -hmm. their parents were like, holy crap, you can actually make money playing games. So, like, if I was telling my mom I wanted to be a pro gamer ten years ago, she probably would have beat me up and stuff. But like now, they're probably like, all right. So it looks like you can make like fifty k a year if you join like a good team. But I guess just like anybody who wants to play like professional football or soccer, like. You can you know how to play, but are you good enough to you know make yep. money at the pro it's level? Like it's a lot different. So Just I because mean, you can play it, you can play well, it. Well, how how much was that kid getting paid? Like when he got accepted? 
I mean, I have to look up the article again, but I mean, definitely. almost I feel like almost every ama- like young amateur player is gonna be like that. Their parents are like, "What is this?" And then they start doing it, and their parents start to understand. Oh, you're traveling the world, you're making money, you're famous. You know, you have people, you have your own fans, you have a following. And I think when they start to see that, they're like they're on board with supporting their kid. But you should then, watch a documentary called Free to Play. It's by Valve. It's about the whole Dota Two scene. Mm-hmm. And there was this one kid who actually was like, I don't, he didn't get disowned by his mom, but his mom like, you know, didn't support him yeah. until his team got like fifth place or something, took home like, like fifty Gs per person. So there's five people on their team, so he got like three hundred thousand dollars. Wow. And his mom was like, oh, okay. So uh, yeah, even there's this this pro. He's in League of Legends. He's been there for like since the beginning. His name's Double If. Like his parents kicked him out when he was like sixteen or seventeen. So he ended up living up with one of his uh, reporter friends, and then after that, he just went pro. And now he's one of the biggest pros in the scene right now. And he's making, definitely making bank. But yeah, when he was, and his parents were, he's Chinese, so his parents kicked him out of the house. Like, yeah, you get salary, you yeah, get sponsorship, you got money, disowned, you get yeah. prize money. Like I don't know, like you have free computer parts. Like <laughs> if if you're responsible by Intel, like oh your i your i nine broke, you know, because i nine just came out, right? Oh your i nine just died. Here's a new one. <laughs> I, I want you to tell me that for me. <laughs> Anyways, awesome. yeah, it's it's definitely. Um, I think a lot of younger people can kind of like idolize those people. They're like the new rock stars, right? For this generation, mm-hmm. I feel like you gotta deal with their love. They gotta get paid for doing it. They get their own following, and basically, yeah, it's their passion. yeah, they're pretty popular too. See them in person, everyone's gonna freak out. Yeah, man, boy. I mean, it makes me want to. Well, I can't be an esports gamer, but it it makes me like uh, really interested to see um, even where we're going to be in terms of esports on the mainstream. Even next year, I could, and especially if VR, they're not going to stop VR. Like you'll be having people joining esports events in VR. That you know that that'd be cool. I think it'd be really cool. I mean, it's like especially if like for myself. I mean, I'm old enough to remember the very first game system. I had the very first Atari. You know, Atari 2600. And to see this progression, I mean, yeah, especially if you have, like, Asian parents, you will get disowned. I mean, <laughs> you want to play video games? You don't want to be a doctor or uh, a lawyer? Yeah, you, you'll get kicked out, you know? You so want to compete in the Nintendo triathlon gauntlet thing? Exactly. <laughs> the Nintendo championships, play Excite Bike and what other games do they play? Oh, the Wizard. Wizard. Uh, yeah, Power yeah. Glove. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, I bet there's gonna be an esports scene for Power Glove too. Who knows? I mean, you think about it. Back in the day, that was like in the '90s. Nintendo was ahead of the curve. They had tournaments. Oh yeah, you're right. Oh, that was the first yeah, esports. Had like yeah. the Kong tournament edition and stuff. Yeah. 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 There was also a Sega Genesis, the Sonic uh, one too. I think there was. There was yeah. one for Sega yeah. Genesis. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, so we can go on to esports or just video games all day long. But um, I think we've been on this episode for quite some time now, so I think we're going to shut it out pretty soon. I mean, yeah. you guys have anything else you want to bring up before we go? Yeah, I need. To, I want to go watch that Resident Evil movie. <laughs> new Resident Evil CGI oh, movie? Yeah, the new yeah, CGI one. How came many out, are like, there? There's, a, there's like four or five, right? For the CGI? Yeah. I think there's only like two I can think of on top of I my thought, head. I thought it was like, because I remember the first one that came out. With Leon, right? Or he like goes to like the airport. Was that the first one? Yeah, Degeneration. That came out like ten years ago. Remember that? Yeah, time? when I was still in high school. Yeah, and, yeah. And so what we're talking about here, we're not talking about the Resident Evil movie with Mila Jovi, the horrible movies, except for the first one, because in Japan, a lot of these movies are CG Japanese movies. Okay, yeah. so uh, I've seen some of the Resident Evil ones. They're way better than the, the actual Resident Evil characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's like about the actual game and like the the lore of the game rather yeah, this than. This one like... takes place between six and seven, so I'm pretty excited. It came out today too, so I want to watch it. Is that on Netflix? Uh, no. it's on you know the internet. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just need a search engine. Uh... <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so we'll watch that uh, and we'll let you know how it is. This shouldn't be too bad, right? I mean, it's going to be corny. It's going to be kind of like not amazing, but it's just yeah, a If cool you want to watch some corny watch. movies, I can show you some Chinese movies. I mean, we watch one. 
Oh, was it last week? Some about mermaids. Well, what did oh. you say? It was like the high, it was the highest grossing Chinese yeah, film it's ever like, or something? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was made by uh, Stephen Chow, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Stephen Chow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, it is the highest grossing Chinese movie, yeah. Mermaids. Yeah. It should have been. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> oh, man. You know, uh, I don't know. I, I saw, um, I already watched stuff on Netflix, but I saw Headshot, that Indonesian movie with the guy from The oh, Raid 2. Oh, the dude from um, The Raid? Yeah, The Raid 2. Yeah, uh, UI. Oh, I can't remember his name. Uh, Ikai, Ikai yeah. Waze. That movie was okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I thought too. But the girl was cute though. Oh yeah, the doctor. <laughs> yeah, the doctor. Yeah, whatever, <laughs> dude. Yeah, it has some good action though, but the story sucks. You know. I mean, it's so boring. But yeah, I don't watch it, it was, for the story. It was generic. I'm not gonna lie. It was pretty <laughs> simple. It was straightforward. Like was it uh, like like the was it like realistic? Was it so grounded or? It it was just like oh hey I kidnapped your girl you gonna come save her or what and you're like okay yeah no I mean like if you watch yeah, it do like... not watch it for the story the story is. It's so generic, like what he say. But the action, the action was pretty good. I'd say yeah. it's definitely not as good as the Raid. The Raid Two is still my favorite. Raid One, I put still, underneath that. You can still yeah. take that storyline. You can watch all the Korean movies that have that same premise. Oh, someone got kidnapped. You gotta go save them. Like, it's just you know. yeah. It's, it's right. Koreans do it really well though. Like, it, it's like I mean, it wasn't bad. Okay, I would. The storyline was. I would not watch it for the story, but the fight seems yeah. pretty cool. You know, I, I was disappointed with the last fight, you know, with this uh, quote unquote father. That was, yeah, that, that was, one sucked. I was, yeah, I, I, spoil it. Well, I was thinking I mean, it was, you know, you remember the raid too, that final fight scene with the knives. That's probably yeah. one of my favorite fight scenes of all time. I was like, dude, I don't know how you're going to top that. And dude, I, the whole last 20 minutes of the movie was just fight scenes. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Oh, man. I love that. I, I think a raid three is coming out. I mean, they are going to be making a raid no, three. The, the, I actually canceled that. I read an interview. It, oh, the director? Like, wow. Yeah. Yeah, no, he was what? like, nope, no more Raid 3. Because he moved back to like England or something. So he's like, oh, man. Either. But but here's the uh, the bad thing about that is um, he signed up as an executive producer for the U.S. remakes of the Raid. So, mm. yeah. Man, dude. I mean, even if he's executive producer, that's you, you remember when they remade the U.S. for the ring with the same guy who directed the first one? That, mm. I mean, I wasn't saying it was bad, but it's... I don't know, dude. Uh, I, I don't think they should do it. I don't. I'm so, anyway, my brother and I, we talk about remakes all the time. There's so much crap. I would say, yeah. I would say one. Yeah. Do you want to remake Back to the Future? Apparently, at least that's what I heard. I hope they don't do that because Back to the Future is a pretty good movie. I, I'm not or surprised. Anything. We should remake bad remakes. How about that? Yeah, that would be better. Yeah. <laughs> remake Are really make own bad movies. You know, like Bollywood? Make I mean, remakes. Oh, you know, <laughs> Spider Man, like every couple of years, like. Yeah. Oh, you know, that's reboots. funny. You mentioned Bollywood, right? Bollywood remakes Korean movies. And <laughs> that was so funny. They, they, some of their Bollywood movies, they remade uh, Korean movies without taking. Uh, and anyway, with, with the, they basically just copied the movies. I don't know if you remember. Um, what's that one? Uh, I can't remember the name. Anyway, I was, it's just funny to see. I saw this Bollywood movie. It was a remake of a Korean movie, like scene by scene. It was so funny. Oh, the man from nowhere. Um, it was a remake of that one. Yeah, it, it, I mean, but they did get the blessing, for, at least for this one, of the uh, original yeah. director. Um, yeah. And God, it was it was it was bad. <laughs> yeah. It was so bad. Oh hey, um, what was that Chinese company you mentioned earlier? It was like Tencent or something. Yeah, Tencent. Yeah. yeah. They they recently released an esports anime that actually just got finished airing like this year. If you guys are interested in watching an esports anime, an esports anime, yeah, can I just watch the real thing? Like, I mean, I guess they have like Prince of Tennis and like all those goofy sports animes. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's, they're trying to dramatize it. I mean, I watch yeah. a couple esports dramas in Korean, but they're like super corny. But what, that that Thai one you sent me? Oh, the one with Ragnarok Online. That was that was that was new. <laughs> I saw it on a on Reddit on a on a Reddit page, and I was like, oh hey, it's Ragnarok. It was. You know how in uh, in Southeast Asia they have those informative like Asian commercials that's like nine minutes long, like oh hey uh, you know uh -huh. be respectful to your sister because who knows what happens. This kid was addicted to playing Ragnarok and his, you know his dad went to the hospital, <laughs> but he learned how to trade stuff. 
like economy wise, he learned his economy through Rock and Rock. So now he's like managing his dad's store. And just for the audience that doesn't know, can you explain Ragnarok? Because I'm pretty sure that if you're US based, you're thinking of Thor Ragnarok. Uh, it's not the same thing. Were you? Yeah, yeah. Ragnarok was a Korean grindy MMO. It's actually anime one of like the inspired. anime inspired. It is um, Norse inspired as well with, with the name yeah. Ragnarok. But it was like the Korean take on Norse mythology and like most uh, popular RPGs back in, MMO RPGs back in the day, especially in you know Eastern Asia, it's super grindy. But when it first came out, it just offered this insane experience of like this nothing like it. Like I like we played for years and years when it first came out and. Yeah, when they first came able out, it was like to, magical. You're in a world, you're fighting magical. monsters, there's different you're, classes. Ex- it was exploration. It was like, one of a kind to be to be yeah. honest. Like different job classes. Um the one it was so it, the game was so hardcore, like when you start, you you just start. There's no tutorial to, tutorial mm-hmm. there's no guide. You just pretty much go and kill stuff and hopefully right. you don't die. And then you know, you meet people along the way, you make all these relationships and everyone starts off, you know, in uh in the same boat literally the same boat um you don't know what to do what's going on it's, it's kind of like if you ever played minecraft for the first time like you just throw into this world and you don't know what to do and you start to figure it out and things just get more interesting exciting from there that's and, how we feel about most games remember we play starbound when it came out and we like spent hours during winter break playing it and now we just stopped playing it yeah i mean there's just something magical about these games where you play with other people your friends and you all progress together and it's just like a new world. Like you figure out everything. Like, oh, like this happens. Oh, you can do this. Oh, you need to go here to do yeah. here. Um, and nowadays, like I, I feel like a lot of MMOs just hold your hands. It's just like a lot of quests. Like, go here, kill these things, come back. Right? Yeah, but isn't that like modern gaming in general? It's like they hold your hand on everything. You don't die, you know. Yeah. Except if you're playing like Bloodborne or something, you know. But yeah, it's really not like real challenge anymore. The challenge is how long you could play, how many DLCs and you could it, download. It's not. <laughs> Like, I think, you know, part of Ragnarok too was like, it's just, it was mysterious. There's so much to do and explore and you're constantly finding new things or a better way to do it. Even like the top level players were always finding new ways to do stuff. On the computer as well. So, yeah. Around the time, like EverQuest, Ultima Online, maybe EverQuest, Ultima Online. Like World of Warcraft wasn't even out when Ragnarok came out. And we were playing this on like Windows ME, if I remember. God, I hate hate Windows ME. It was was that old. Yeah, wow! Oh, I don't even remember that actually. Yeah. Uh, oh, we can talk. We can have another episode about classic MMOs. We can talk yeah. about Maple Story. I ain't scared. PSO. PSO Maple Story. Um, we can talk about Gunbound. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just us getting older, or more cynical about gaming. But there's just like this, this magical time as like, uh, teenagers going through. Pu- the you know, pubescent teenagers just like playing all these yeah. online games and just yeah, I, I getting, think it, getting lost in that world. Yeah, I think it happens to every gamer as you get older because, I mean, I play a lot of retro games, so I'm really nostalgic for all the 80s and 90s games. And that's, yeah. you know, so I, it, I think it happens to all gamers um, right. if they if they were, if they were played games since they were young. But, but the thing is, like, that was our peak. Like, so far it's been our peak. Like, we haven't been able to find another game that's been able to recreate the same magic. It's really hard to... One of the cool things about online gaming back then was like when you first online game, like playing Diablo 2 online, you're like, oh, wow, I'm playing with another real person. Like, yeah. this is cool. Like, this, you're new. Like, you know, I yeah, well, that, well, but now well, that, these days, it's just like a, like a, I mean, it's an afterthought. It's like, man, what is this guy doing here? Get away from me. It's like, well, that, oh, well, you're online too. What do you get? Just log off. Well, like, well, that, yeah. that was Doom and Doom 2 for me. Like, when that first happened, I was just like, whoa, what the, what? <laughs> it's like playing with somebody on the internet. It was right. crazy. Yeah. And then you can hear your modem just cranking. Like, dur, dur. I'm like yes. Awesome. <laughs> like, then online, it's like, like, you get, like, a cool feeling. Like, you get to meet new people. Like, if you play MMOs now, or even, like, online games like League of Legends, when you go to a match with random people, you don't even really talk to each other. You're just like, right. oh, okay, so. And it's no longer a person. It's just, like, they lose this humanity. Before, it's like, well, that's an actual person behind, you know, the computer screen. Now it's like. I don't know. It's just generic guy, yeah. generic guy A, generic guy B, generic girl, whatever you know. Yeah, well, it's kind of like social media, and even on YouTube and stuff. You know, there's, it's kind of mm-hmm. hard because there's, there's so many people. You know, you're so used to it, mm-hmm. right? So it's just like oh, it's just another generic hey, person. Yeah, I mean, 
we we can attribute it to like just a lot of changes in PC gaming, like mm -hmm. matchmaking, the prevalence of matchmaking. Before, like in old games, you would go to a specific server and you would always play with the same people on a server, and you create this community about it. Um, I don't know. A lot of games they just forego that now. Like, you don't really interact with people. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I we were wrapping up. What happened to that? Yeah. Huh? Well, it, 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 we're just wrapping up like I don't know 30 oh, yeah, minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. well, it it happens a lot on our it is it happens a lot in our episodes. It's not scripted, yeah. and so, uh, you know, one thing I do want to try though, um, I I can't do FPS games. I I just can't anymore. It just makes me dizzy, and I get I get killed anyway. So I really want to try a, a fighting game online. You know, whether it's Street Fighter, or Injustice. Yeah, I'm just I keep hearing of, I keep thinking about latency. Like you know, it's how. How bad is it really, you know? I mean, if you... uh, it definitely depends on the game. Like, if you play FPSs, or RTSs, or MOBAs, I would say there's never really an issue with latency. And if it is, it's not because of, like, the game code, really. It's more like server or your own connection. Uh, fighting games, it's due to the developers. Like, I think Street Fighter V's that code was really bad. Yeah, I don't think um, I think they did. And it's just really hard to get, like, a standard optimization for a fighting game network latency just because it's so sensitive right mm -hmm. yeah so i don't think i don't think there's like no one de facto standard or one game that did it just like flawlessly right so it just depends on, on which game you pick yeah that's about that's about the only thing i'd want to play online one. you know i just yeah. want to and nah, obviously one, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna get like yeah i'll get killed <laughs> yeah you get killed <laughs> don't doubt about it <laughs> i'll get i'll get mashed up with some uh yeah. some noobs yeah, you know oh man. anyways yeah let, let's start wrapping up for real guys i mean i know we're really passionate about games and esports and we can go on all day but i think we'll end it here block block it's got the chicken <laughs> anyways so yeah any any final thoughts anything you want to say to the audience xbox what xbox one x isn't going to be as cool as people are going to think it'd be i mean it does have backwards compatibility which i think mm -hmm. is the coolest thing about that but i'm not paying 500 bucks just to play shinmu 2 on it yeah <laughs> me too battalion i, I yeah. could do that through uh emulators so yeah it's no problem yeah the new xbox is coming out it's gonna have Dude. xbox 360 and wait is one x <laughs> gonna have like exclusive games like that's only made for one x i don't think so they can't they can't fragment the base like that there's no oh, way yeah only only forza 4k <laughs> Oh yeah, that's the only. Well, they already, for, uh, I mean, they already the new 3DS has so. new 3DS exclusive games, but yeah, but for yeah. multiplayer, it's like you're not going to fragment the multiplayer like that on a yeah. console like that. I think so. Anyways, anything you guys gonna see? I mean, we're gonna watch the Resident Evil movie, obviously. Resident so. Evil. Anything else coming out that's good? No, I so, will say what. It's really right. nothing. Nothing else coming yeah. out that's good. I don't. Know. And there is. We we'll, we'll talk about it next week. Anyway, so we're gonna wrap it up, guys. Thank you for watching. Thanks uh, for our viewers that interacted with us in the chat. Yeah, thanks. Tommy a lot, Norwood. Uh, Tommy Norwood. Foxy. Hey, to any. And uh, yeah. also Gabe at the beginning. Uh, Gabe. At the bottom. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I hope we were interesting enough for you. Yeah, to, and I also uh, definitely want to give a special thank to Barriers for being on it. This is really a different episode for us, especially with the esports stuff. He might come back in another episode. Maybe he's wearing the same pink shirt. We don't know. X, X Barriers, X, 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 X is more X's. Xbox One Barriers, X, X underscore. <laughs> and, you know, maybe because uh, last time me and my brother, we actually, uh, on a few episodes, we played a game uh, on Steam while we were uh, doing our... Was it Move or Die? Was it Move or Die? We should play Move or Die. That would be awesome. I, I do have that, yeah. But um, yeah, no, it was, we, we've played it was, some games. It was Ibn Ab. Yeah. It was Ibn Ab and uh, what's it? Ibn Ab and we played River City Ransom. Yeah. Um, nice. Maybe we'll, we'll be fine that are going to play pretty soon. I'm sure. Yeah. Nice. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll probably see you again soon. Thanks a lot. We're out.